they have never been part of our history textbooks they have never been part of our historical curricula because we have tried to brush under the carpet everything that has happened since 700 AD every few years there's a problem every few years we go back to what happened 2000 years ago or 1200 years ago take it from the hands of those people who are intent in propagating a defeatist mindset namaste subscribe to our channel to stay updated with our regular videos like the video and do leave a comment below so youtube recommends this to more like minded souls and do share our videos with others to help spread the message now why is history relevant today let's put it in indian context assume that there is a certain community which came part of the invasion horde which came to india a thousand years ago let's say in 700 ad when sindh was invaded for the very first time can you hold the son or the grandson or the prapatra responsible for what the grandfather did it's impossible you can't hold him responsible he was not there he did not play a role his free will did not play a role therefore you can't hold people who live in the present responsible for the actions of their ancestors ye baat jo hai bahut jagahon pe lagu hoti hai chahe ab hindu caste ki baat kare ya fir baaki communities ki baat kare it applies both ways therefore if you can't kick these people out and it is important for us to talk about living together the only way for us is to agree that you did this to me this was wrong the problem as far as india is concerned is truth and reconciliation have never been part of our historical discourse they have never been part of our history textbooks they have never been part of our historical curricula because we have tried to brush under the carpet everything that has happened since 700 ad we have tried to brush under the carpet the reality because we are scared of it there could be a good reason people might say agar aap past ki itni baat karna shuru karenge aur aap khodne lagenge कि इतने लोग मारे गए इतने लोगों का बलात्कार हुआ इतने लोग बंदी बनाए गए सो मेनी पीपल वेर मेड स्लेव्स एंड दे वेर ड्रैग्ड अक्रॉस द हिंदू कुश यू से ऑल ऑफ दीज थिंग्स इट माइट इनसाइट वायलेंस देर फॉर पर हैप्स द बेस्ट थिंग टू डू इज टू ब्रश इट ऑन द कार्पेट एंड बिहेव एज इफ इट डजेंट एग्जिस्ट इन द लास्ट सेवेंटी ईयर्स एवर सिंस वी डिसाइडेड दैट पर हैप्स द बेस्ट वे टू डील विद सिचुएशन इज क्रिएट अ सेपरेट कंट्री एंड एस्टेब्लिश अ सेपरेट कंट्री हैज दिस प्रूवन टू बी अ सक्सेस आई डोंट थिंक सो every few years there's a problem every few years allegations are hurled against each other every few years we go back to what happened 2000 years ago or 1200 years ago so to behave as if history has not is not relevant and has not mattered is stupidity that is the behavior of an ostrich therefore it is important to recontextualize history it is important to recontextualize history and take it from the hands of those people who are intent in propagating a defeatist mindset I'll give this uh, a different twist altogether. If you read history textbooks on a regular basis, all you hear and all you read is for the last 2000 years or at least 1200 years, India's history has nothing be, has been nothing short of a monstrous defeat after defeat in the in the face of invasions. That is the only thing that you read. and when a child reads this over and over again from the let's say from the 5th standard to the 12th standard or the 10th standard that means in his formative years he is being told that he is part of a defeated nation of a defeated community and when that happens it is bound to affect a sense of self esteem it reflects in your body language it reflects in your approach to everything nobody wants to be told in this country despite all these barbaric invasions despite all the monumental and wholesale destruction and genocide that was that was meted out to these uh, to the people native to this country we are still here greek history abhi sirf kitabon mein hai the original greek history roman history is only in books you have heard of this place called constantinople in history what is it known as today istanbul what is known as the the royal mosque in turkey was previously the hagia sophia church you don't have a trace of african traditions and pagan roots has anyone been to uh, northeast europe or north northwest europe the baltic states so i had the opportunity to go to latvia lithuania and estonia of all the places that i chose for vacation i chose these three countries the baltic countries for the simple reason that if you go to that place आपको हिंदी कानों में सुनाई पड़ेगा संस्कृत आपको सुनाई पड़ेगा 
because one of the closest languages to Sanskrit is Lithuanian. One of the closest languages to Indo-European languages or Indo-Aryan languages is Lithuanian. What is the connection? Does it prove that we are all actually the Santana of invaders, the Aryans? Or does it prove that log yahan se bhar the? Have you read the recent news reports that the light complexion of the European is perhaps the contribution of Indian of an Indian who left this place 10,000 years ago? This news report came out two days ago. It was an Indian ancestor who, who contributed to the fair complexion of the Europeans. That is what the new study says. So we are fighting on complexion. We are fighting on who is an Aryan and who is a Dravidian, when there is a decent chance that as opposed to the Aryan invasion theory, you should be looking at out of India theory, that people left this place and went outside. Why is this important? Because people are asking for a Dravidian Adu today. People are saying that four states in the south or five states in the south should form a separate country because they form part of the Dravidian language and the Dravidian culture, and they're not part of the larger Indian culture. That is the extent to which history is being used to drive a wedge between people. People who are saying that we may speak different languages, Vesh Bhusha Alag Ho Sakta Hai, everything can be different, but there is a common sutra that ties all of us, are being branded as right-wingers, as fascists, as people who are intent on thopifying one culture on everybody else. And those people who are saying, Aap sab alag ho. Aap ek dusre ke saath baat hi nahi kar sakte hai. And people who are giving, f let's say, food and water to separatist ideologies are being pushed as people with a liberal bent of mind. So if anybody says that history ha does not play a role in any of these discussions, I'm sorry, I would genuinely call him a stupid fellow because he's blind to what is happening right in front of him.